quite simply the fact of the matter is people just don't want to be in an HOA they don't want to be told what to do and I'm talking about a homeowners association they want to be able to live where they want to live and do what they want to do however there can be some good things to a homeowners association for one is the beautification there's something to be said about a niceness and beautification of a neighborhood and a subdivision where everything collectively looks good. It increases that desirability. And when you increase desirability for a community, in a community, you increase property values because bottom line is people want to live in that neighborhood. Now, those that know me know that I don't like to be told what to do, as most people don't like to be told what to do. However, I don't want a neighbor moving in and parking a big RV in their front yard or their backyard. I don't want a neighbor putting a swing set in the front yard. I don't want a neighbor who's gonna paint their house purple or yellow or not maintain it. If we don't have structure a little bit, it diminishes the value of our properties. It diminishes the desirability. And that's where it begins. If there's no desire to live in your home, your neighborhood, your community, then the value has to come down to make it appealing to people who can live with an RV or motorhome or motorcycles or engines hanging from the trees because Jesse or Willie like to work on the cars in the front yard. Now there is a difference between an HOA and a residential neighborhood and a condominium or a townhome. You in a condominium, it's obvious, properties are attached and when they're single family homes in a residential neighborhood just with houses they're not attached right but the big difference are the fees the fees that you pay on a monthly basis and what those fees cover and if you've ever lived in a condo or an association with homeowners whether it be residential or condos and you've ever had a circumstance or a situation share that with us I mean, what is it that you've done would you prefer an HOA or rather not be in an HOA. Now, when you live in a condo or a townhome, it's a little bit different, meaning that all of the exterior components, parts, roof, that sort of thing are covered by the homeowners association. They're also covered by the insurance and that sort of thing, right? You also have trash, water, sewer, uh, lawn maintenance. All of that will be covered with the homeowners association in a condo or townhome. As a result, your fee is going to be more now when you live in a residential neighborhood it's a little bit different you take care of everything on your property but you do have a homeowners association that takes care of all the common ground common maintenance entrances lighting a pond a pool clubhouse those are all taken care of by the homeowners association as a result you pay typically a quarterly or an annual fee for those items to be maintained now it's important to also know that these people that are over the homeowners associations most oftentimes it's just voluntary they simply volunteer their time to work on and be a part of the community to address anything that needs to be fixed repaired replaced or just general maintenance within the community now if you're looking to purchase a property and you're going to buy a piece of property it's so important to ask for a copy of the deed restrictions and the restrictive covenants, the bylaws, if you will, of the community, because that will explain in great detail exactly what you can and cannot do in the community. Not just condo living, but what you can and cannot do to your own personal home. Now, it may be an instance where you have a motor home, a boat, or motorcycle, and you wanna park it on the outside, but the restrictive covenants are gonna tell you that you cannot. The last thing you wanna do is purchase a major piece of property, a major purchase in your life, and they tell you you can't do that. Well, in worst case scenario, you have to go get a storage unit, but you don't wanna make sure that you know that before you physically move and purchase the property. And of course, it's pretty easy to get a copy of the restrictive covenants and bylaws, which I'm talking about, and that's simple. Ask your real estate agent to get those for you or contact a real estate, local real estate closing attorney and ask them to get them for you. Or you can simply go to the parish or county seat where you're looking to purchase that property, tell them the name of the subdivision and they'll pull those records for you. Now we notice this quite often when communities don't want their HOA dues, their homeowners association dues to go up, whether it be a condo on a monthly basis or a neighborhood, residential neighborhood, they don't want their dues to go up. And the reason why they don't want their dues to go up is because they're not seeing progress. But unfortunately, everything increases. Electric increases that it takes to run the lights, to maintain a pond, a pool, a clubhouse, some communities even own their own streets, believe it or not, and have to maintain those streets 
And then they also have to keep reserves. They have to keep financial reserves in case, Lord forbid, a tree were to fall on something such as a gazebo or something breaks, it has to be fixed. Now, it's really important to know this. Oftentimes, and what they're doing now, and have been for, I don't know, 10 or 20 years, is they will actually put into the Homeowners Association, that's my truck right there, they'll put into the Homeowners Association and basically just say that dues are gonna go up and they'll go up a set amount. And oftentimes they may not say they're gonna go up a set amount, but they're gonna go up a percentage and that the board that's elected to oversee the HOA can increase dues at will. Now keep in mind, it's not a stupid, crazy astronomical amount, but it's important to know that they can increase dues, they will increase dues, and oftentimes it's put into the restrictive covenants in the bylaws that says that homeowners association dues will increase every year at a certain amount. So when dues aren't increased, things begin to diminish because the monthly cost of things that have to be paid for, there's just a minimum amount of money in that account to cover those items. And as a result, I see it time and time again. Oftentimes when we show properties, condos, townhomes, neighborhoods, people question what's wrong with the community? Why don't they maintain it? Well, quite simply, oftentimes there's no money to maintain it. Now, it is so important to know that if you do not pay your homeowners association dues, the board, the homeowners association put a lien on your property and they do and they will. The only way to make that lien go away is to pay the amount that you owe. So what happens is they will keep up with the dues that you didn't pay or perhaps it's a fine that you're being slapped with because you put a storage building where you shouldn't have put a storage building or you put a fence or you shouldn't have put a fence. The moral of the story is this, keep it nice, keep it clean, pick up after yourself, and just be respectful of your neighbors. Everybody has to live together unless you want to live and move out in the country. And even then, you have, unfortunately, county and Paris and state laws of what you can and can't do on your property. And Lord forbid, not pay your property taxes or pay your state income tax, or that's a whole nother video in itself. Hope this helps you. If you're just new to the channel, be sure and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. We hope you like it. You'll learn everything there is to know when it comes to real estate by subscribing to this channel. We'll see you soon.